These are five super easy to make, unbelievable appetizers that you know really well. But what you don't know is that they were born out of mistakes. You probably eat these quite often, but what you've never heard anywhere else is the weird history of how they were first created. Number 1. The name of the first one takes after the person who created it. Imagine walking into a restaurant hungry and ready to eat, only to find out that the kitchen staff is gone for the day. This is exactly what happened one fateful day in 1940. But the twist in the tale is what led to the birth of an appetizer that would take the world by storm. In a small town just across the Rio Grande, a group of women found themselves in dining trouble that would accidentally make culinary history. They were simply looking for a quick bite and a refreshing drink, unaware that their request would spark a moment of genius from an unlikely chef. The man faced with the challenge was not a cook, but the head waiter. If you know what's the affectionate nickname, common in Spanish-speaking countries for anyone named Ignacio, you'd already know the name of this appetizer. So, Ignacio was in a difficult situation. With no professional chefs in sight and a group of eager customers waiting, he didn't know he was going to change the world of snacks. Rushing into the kitchen, Ignacio searched through the pantry and gathered what he could find. His simple but innovative creation was a dish featuring crispy fried corn tortilla chips, topped with melted Colby cheese and the sharp bite of pickled jalapenos. This spontaneous dish was something the women had never tasted before, making them want more of what they called nacho special. Why nachos? Because nacho is the affectionate Spanish nickname for Ignacio. The dish became a staple at that small venue and spread far and wide becoming a beloved snack across regions. As surprising as this tale is, it's just the beginning. The next story is how great mothers are as innovators. It is unbelievable what they can pull out of thin air for their beloved sons, while having only limited resources. But still, they are more than able to impress their son's friends. Number 2 Here's a story that starts in a kitchen but ends up in the hearts and stomachs of spicy food lovers everywhere. In 1964, the Anchor Bar in Buffalo, New York was just a regular spot with a great atmosphere. But one night, it unknowingly set the stage for a culinary revolution that would put it on the map. The co-owner, Teresa Valissimo, was about to close for the night when her son and his friends walked in hungry for a snack. In the fridge, Teresa found some leftover chicken wings, a part of the chicken that was usually overlooked or used for stock. With a spark of creativity, she decided to whip up something quick and satisfying for the boys. She took those wings, fried them up nice and crispy, and then did something unexpected. She drenched them in a peppery hot sauce. The boys loved them. Seeing their reaction, the Bellissimos made a bold decision. They put those spicy wings on the menu the very next day. They served them with celery slices and a cool blue cheese sauce to balance the heat and called them buffalo wings. The wings were a hit from the moment they landed on the menu. But just when you think you've heard the most surprising origin story, there's always another dish waiting to top it. The next one was actually born out of stress. Number 3 in a small hotel just a bit south of Paris during the 1880s, two sisters, Stephanie and Caroline Tatton, were about to make history mistakenly. Stephanie, who took care of most of the cooking, was overwhelmed with work. She decided to whip up an apple pie, a simple enough task on any other day. But this wasn't any other day. What was about to happen was crucial for this new appetizer. In the chaos, she left the apples cooking in butter and sugar for way too long. When she caught the scent of something burning, panic set in. Thinking fast, she tried to save her mistake by covering the overcooked apples with pastry and putting the whole pan in the oven upside down. When it was time to serve this flipped creation, Stephanie expected the worst. But to her surprise, the hotel guests loved it. What she thought was a disaster turned out to be a hit. The dessert, an upside-down tart, wasn't new. Plenty of famous chefs had made similar dishes before, but this version was special. How? Even though this creation became the thing everyone talked about, the Tatton sisters never called it their signature dish. They didn't write a cookbook or brag about their invention. 
The dessert became famous and got its name only after they were gone, thanks to food enthusiasts and a well-known Paris restaurant. So what was this accidental masterpiece called? The Tarte Tatin. And just when you think you've heard the most surprising kitchen tale, sometimes the names of cooks become the names of dishes. But it's not that obvious with the next one. Here's how it happened. Number 4. In a twist that marries necessity with innovation, the story of this appetizer takes us to a bustling restaurant scene in Tijuana, Mexico during the Roaring Twenties. The name of this dish comes from the first name of the mastermind who created it. His last name was Cardini. He was an Italian immigrant with a knack for turning limitations into culinary gold. Cardini, who lived in San Diego but ventured into Tijuana to capitalize on the Prohibition-era American thirst for leisure, found himself facing a kitchen crisis on the 4th of July in 1924. With a restaurant packed full of customers and the pantry running low, Cardini had to think on his feet. He grabbed some lettuce, eggs, olive oil, a little Worcestershire sauce, lemon, garlic, Parmesan cheese, and some bread to make croutons. Cardini then decided to mix it all up right where his customers could see. He started with the lettuce, tossed it with oil, and then added each ingredient step by step, making sure everyone was watching. His first name was Caesar. But while Caesar Cardini is credited with the salad's invention, the plot becomes more complex with tales of its true origin. Some stories suggest that Cardini's brother Alex whipped up the first Caesar salad, originally called the Aviator Salad, in honor of the pilots flying in from the Prohibition dry United States. Even though we're not sure who exactly made it first, the story of the Caesar salad going from a quick fix to a worldwide favorite shows how being creative with what you've got can lead to something amazing. But as captivating as the tale of the Caesar salad is, it's just one of many in the world of accidental culinary discoveries. Sometimes dishes are born from experimentation, but this one was made in response to a complaint. Number 5. In the mid-19th century, a simple complaint sparked a culinary revolution at a lakeside restaurant in Saratoga Springs, New York. The story starts with a chef, George Crum, who faced a customer who was impossible to please. This customer kept sending back a popular dish, claiming it wasn't good enough, too thick, too soggy, and lacking in flavor. In a mix of frustration and creativity, the chef decided to turn the tables on this challenging diner. He took the basic ingredients of the dish and made them as thin as possible, fried them to a perfect crisp, and seasoned them heavily with salt, hoping to make a point more than anything else. To everyone's surprise, the dish was an instant hit. The complaining customer couldn't get enough, and soon everybody wanted a taste. This snack, made in a moment of creative rebellion, is what we now know and love as potato chips. If you liked learning about how these famous appetizers came to be, there's more to explore. Watch this video for more cool stories about food.